Hey, welcome back to the channel. So the other day I put up a video on using an external GPU with a 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, when I was editing that video, I realized it was just way too long. So I decided to split up this benchmarking into a separate video. I promised you in that video I would deliver and I'm delivering on that today. Now I'm shooting this intro at a different time. So this intro is gonna look a little bit different than the rest of the video, but who cares, right? So with that out of the way, let's get into the benchmarking of using an external GPU with an RX 5700 card in it on a 13 inch 2012 MacBook Pro. So now comes time for the benchmarks to show you what kind of performance gains we get with this eGPU. Just for point of reference, like I said, this is a 2012 13 inch MacBook Pro. It's got the i5 3210 processor. That's a dual core processor. Uh, I've only got six gigs of RAM in this because my other RAM is being utilized elsewhere. And the GPU that I'm using in the eGPU enclosure is an AMD Radeon RX 5700. So let's get into these benchmarks. I did before and after benchmarks and only use benchmarks that test the GPU performance because this isn't gonna change the processing speed or anything else like that. The first benchmark we ran was Geekbench. On Geekbench, I ran two different tests, both with and without the GPU. I ran the OpenCL and the Metal test. For OpenCL, without that eGPU, just using the internal Intel 4000 GPU, we got a score of 874, which is pretty low. Using that eGPU, we had a humongous jump up to 25,898. So obviously that is a huge increase in that GPU performance capability using OpenCL. The next one we ran was Metal. And we saw an even bigger jump with this because with just the internal GPU, we got a score of 100. And with the external GPU, we got a score of 29,009. So again, two humongous boosts in graphical performance. The next benchmark is Unigen Heaven. And again, I ran this both with and without the external GPU. And both tests were done at 1920 by 1080 at medium settings. So without that GPU, we got an average frames per second of 6.4. Uh, we have a minimum of 3.9 and a max of 12.2. So extremely poor scores, obviously, uh, as expected with that integrated GPU. With the external RX 5700, we got an average frames per second of 31 with a minimum of 9.1 and a max of 42. Now those scores may seem low for an RX 5700 and you're right, but you have to remember that we're talking about Thunderbolt 1 that has a pretty low throughput. So the fact that we had that much of an increase from 6.4 to 31 is huge in my book, even with that limited bandwidth. So the last thing I wanted to test was rendering performance in Final Cut Pro. So of course I used the Bruce X benchmark. Now, if you don't know what that is, it is a sample 5K project that you export and kind of time it to see how fast it exports. Uh, to benchmark your rendering speed. So there you go. Running the benchmark without the eGPU took three minutes and 28 seconds. Now using that eGPU, running the th same export and making sure that Final Cut Pro is set to use the external GPU as the rendering GPU, it took 28 seconds. So that's a full three minutes off this sample footage. So that increase is huge. If you are video editing, and you wanna get this GPU to help improve that rendering performance, this is a thumbs up for me. It was a huge boost, even with that limited bandwidth. The last thing I wanna talk about is gaming, and although the eGPU did provide higher frames in games, they're still not really playable, and that has to do with the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 1. Games are very dependent on a consistent bandwidth and a consistent frame rate, and it just is not there with this connection. It was barely there with the Thunderbolt 2 connection when I did that one. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 is great, that's no problem at all. But with Thunderbolt 1, it's just not, um, enough bandwidth there to support uh, consistent frames in gaming. So if you're looking to get this to improve your games, I wouldn't really invest in it for that. You're only gonna get just a, a slight improvement. 
So there we go. That is the 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro using an eGPU. Thunderbolt 1, even though it's not supported, does work. And depending on what you want to do, gives you a pretty decent improvement. If you're looking to improve games, it's just not there. Don't even uh, bother with this solution. Uh, if you're video editing and you want to boost that performance a little bit, I actually did see you know, decent performance gains in that area. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. If you have any recommendations on other things you want me to check on this machine or other machines that I've reviewed, let me know that as well. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up or subscribe if you found this useful or informative. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.